Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of how we back test a VAR model or the model back test. This is a classic statistical decision where we're trying to figure out if our model is broken or not. So we start with the assumption here and that is that let's just assume we've somehow decided or determined that our 99% daily VAR value at risk is 1 million. What does that mean? Well, VAR itself is a probabilistic metric. So this means not that we do not expect to lose more than a million on any given day, but rather that 1% of the time we do expect to lose at least $1 million. That's probabilistic. So let's assume in a year there are 250 days. That means that 1% of the time, or about two and a half days out of the year, we do expect the portfolio to lose over a million dollars. A back test is really very simple. We simply look at history and count how many times do we exceed the VAR as compared to how many times we expected to exceed the VAR. Now in our 99% daily VAR in 250 days, we just multiply 1% times 250 gives us two and a half. We expect last year, say, that on two and a half days, two or three days, say, we would have lost at least a million dollars. That would have been exactly in line with our expectation on a 99% VAR. Now for the back test, we go back, look over the year, and actually see how many exceedances we had, or failures, or we could also call it exceptions. So we can call them failures, exceptions, or exceedances. And you can notice I've just got them listed here. We might have experienced zero failures, meaning on no days did we lose more than a million dollars. We might have one or two or three. And now the thing about exceeding one million is we either do exceed a million or we don't. That makes it a Bernoulli variable. So these are Bernoulli trials. If they're independent, that makes this a binomial distribution. A binomial distribution is a series of Bernoulli trials that are independent. So that means, let me assume that our model is perfectly correctly calibrated. 99% VAR means we expect losses in excess of a million 1% of the time or two and a half days out of the year so that we can use the binomial distribution value of P corresponds to that 1% significance or one minus 99% confidence 250 days out of the year. And then here is a binomial distribution that, that is characterized by these parameters. And you'll notice it in fact peaks at two, which is about the mean, the mean is two and a half. So that means that if we go back and look out over last year, we want to consider that a sample. It's just a sample that happened to occur over the last year. The key idea here is sampling variation. We don't expect, even if the VAR is perfectly calibrated, to observe two and a half losses because there is some random sampling variation around that mean as characterized here. So you can see if, for example, we observe one failure or exceedant, that means on one day last year, the VAR, uh, the loss exceeded a million, that probability of that outcome is fully 20%. This bar right here, perfectly acceptable um, outcome given our distribution. So if we observe one, we have no reason to reject this model. In fact, we can observe three, that's got a probability of 21.5%, and we really would have no reason to reject this model. It's a reasonable outcome given random sampling variation. And so we can make a, we can make a decision here and apply a cutoff. I've got it here starting at five, such that we can say, if we observe five or more Lost daily losses or losses on a day on five days out of the year or more that exceed a million that we're going to decide to reject this as a correct model or statistically to reject the null hypothesis that this is a correct model. And you can see, even if I add up all of these outcomes here, five to 10, that ends up, uh, the sum of that is 10.8%. Even if this VAR model is perfectly calibrated, random sampling variation does allow over 10% of the time 
the losses to occur on five days or more. So this is possible. We would reject the model, but it would be a mistake. And put statistically, it would be a type one error. We would have rejected a true null or rejected a correct model. Now it could work the other way. Let's just say our VAR is incorrectly calibrated. Let's say actually it should only be a 97% confidence such that 3% of the time or three times 250 is about seven and a half days out of the year. We would have a daily loss in excess of a million. Well, ran, here's that new distribution. You can see it shifted over the right. Random sampling variation still allows for some favorable perceived outcomes over here. In fact, we could observe zero, one, two, three, or four days out of the year. If I add all those up together right here, I'm gonna get about 12.8%. So again, over 10% of the time, even we have a broken model, we could observe um, sufficiently few losses daily losses, such that we decide to accept the model. So in this case, statistically speaking, we make a type two error. That is to say, we accept a broken model, or put another way, we accept a null that is actually false. And now there's not gonna be any way for us to eliminate simultaneously or reduce both the type one and type two error. What we're doing is making a statistical decision. We're conducting the back test, which again is going back over the year and counting. How many times did we exceed the VAR over the year? If our model is perfect, we expect, expected between two and three. And then we decide whether, based on the number of observed losses in excess of the VAR, do we accept or reject the model? But we do that knowing that if we decide here to reject the model for a high number of failures or exceedances, there is a small chance that we made a mistake. The model's really correct, and random sampling variation just produced a sort of anomaly with high losses, a high number of days in which the losses exceeded a million. And on the other hand, we might observe a small number of failures, decide to accept that the VAR is, per, is correctly calibrated when in fact it's really broken. We're not gonna be able to eliminate this. We're not gonna be able to say with any certainty that the VAR model is correctly or incorrectly calibrated. We're using statistics to try and make an informed decision. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.